So in the videos discussing the art style of Halo, I got a lot of requests to talk about the armor in the modern Halo games. Part of the reason I never talked about the armor in the last two art videos was due to there being a lot to discuss. So much so that it would need its own video, but since you all have asked so nicely, we will discuss the design of the armor in 343's Halo games, but before we begin, we need to set some ground rules. Number one, you're allowed to have your own opinions. I don't want to see people attacking each other for preferring one art style over the other. Number two, I do not want to see people using the take off your nostalgic goggles or it just doesn't like change argument because that's a lazy dismissal of some people's real opinions. Change doesn't always equal good. There is such a thing as bad change, and for some people, maybe they think that these changes are bad. So let them have their opinion. And number three, maybe be open to discussion about other people's views. Instead of insulting people, why not listen to them. So none of this, you're not a real Halo fan, or 343 killed Halo, or the new art style is a poop from a butt. I want to see you explain your views in a respectful manner and have honest discussions in the comments section. So now that the rules are out of the way, you ready? Well, let's begin. In the era of Halo CE, one of the goals of shooty action games were to focus on fulfilling the power fantasy. Who doesn't want to be an 8 foot tall super soldier in heavy, massive, bulky, looming armor as he mows down hundreds of evil henchmen slash aliens? As kids, we would watch our heroes in sci-fi, in comics, or movies in their super powered exoskeletons and power armor as they took on the antagonists and all of his minions and look so cool doing it. So when it came to video games, which were now getting more advanced 3D techniques that would help make the worlds look less like paper mache and more like something that could actually resemble the real world, it made sense that they would translate those epic moments in our comics and movies and so on into a game. The look of the Spartan is very much based on the power fantasy. The Spartans were the coolest of the cool. Marines would go nuts whenever they are around. They would kick ass in battle. Hell, even the Covenant were scared of them. Awesome sci-fi power armor had a standard in those days, and it's a standard that Halo followed, and it ended up creating something that Halo could honestly call its own. The look of the Halo Spartans in the original trilogy is still to this day very iconic in gaming and recognizable. Now when it came to the way that sci-fi armor was traditionally designed back then, there have always been kind of like sleek and slender sci-fi armors here and there, but the slow downfall of the badass power armor and the rise of the new sleeker power armors in my opinion began in 1997 with a little film called Steel starring Shaq. I'm just kidding. It was 2008's Iron Man. Now, was Iron Man the first instance of sci-fi to have sleek power armor? Again, no, but it was a trend starter. People were wowed in the cinemas with the holograms, elaborate sequences where the armors were attached to Tony Stark like a massive body-wide puzzle, and so on. After this movie, people began to look at this kind of stuff as lame and outdated. After Iron Man, I noticed a surge in the sleek Iron Man style power armors in the sci-fi genre. Hell, even to this day, you still see it happening. Everybody wants to have their own Iron Man armors with complex holograms and all sorts of little bits assembling themselves on the main character as they follow the trend set by this awesome movie. Again, Iron Man didn't invent the complex, sleek sci-fi body armor in the same way that Call of Duty 4 didn't invent Sprint. But it's no secret that both of those things were popular enough that everyone else wanted to maybe inject a little bit of that success into their own properties, and that's completely fine. Now, while Iron Man's new standard for the look of badass power armor may have been a factor in the new designs for the Spartans in Halo 4 and 5, there's a couple more things that I want to get into. I took into account many people's arguments. I've read forum posts of complaints and gripes, and the major offenses that I've seen from people about the new art style of the armors will be listed now. It's generic. It's too Power Rangers-y. It's too plasticky. It's over-designed. Not really practical. Now personally, I try to stay away from the term generic because I think it's a rather uncreative criticism because of how vague it is as a term. I could make an argument that this is generic. Or this. Or this. Or even this. When criticizing something, you need to be specific about your gripes and be clear. You can't really just say, it looks dumb, or eh, looks generic. Because I mean, 
That's not really gonna convince me. You're not giving me an argument. I need you to persuade me and explain why you feel that you're right, while also remembering to maintain a level of respect for my views and my opinions. When it comes to the arguments of if the armor is over-designed or plasticky, I have a few interesting thoughts here and there, but we will come back to those in a bit. For now, let's discuss what 343 was maybe thinking when they made specific changes. Spartans are incredibly fast, nimble, and skilled in the fields of hand-to-hand -hand combat, traversal, and in some cases, they're almost untouchable up close on the field. 343 wanted to better express this with the way that they designed the armor, and as cool as this armor looks, Realistically, this would actually hinder the Spartans' flexibility and mobility in a few ways. You can see a few areas where 343 attempted to open up the armor and make it a little bit less of a hindrance on your movement, with the way that they lowered the shoulder pads so that they wouldn't get caught or snagged on the chest pieces whenever the Spartans or mocap actors raised their hands above their head, and the way they also removed the space diaper so that the Spartans' torso area is freed up a bit more in case the Spartans want to, I don't know, maybe hunch over without having sharp metal pieces jabbing into his or her gut? Now, a common complaint is that the torso area is basically completely exposed, but if we we look at the armor, we can actually see that there is still some protection down there. Some armor pieces have these little bars going down the lower torso area, and there seems to be a thick material padding up the groin area. And also don't forget that the armor has an energy shield to protect it, and contrary to popular belief, once the shield fails, in canon, that bodysuit is quite tough. But speaking of the bodysuit, something interesting to point out is that the material around the gloves seem to have these like grips on the fingers and palms so that it's easier to grip things and hold objects like your weapon without it slipping. The material looks a lot more user-friendly than the previous gloves on the Spartans. Now we can keep going on and on and on, but ultimately what I'm trying to point out is that I don't really like when people dismiss the new look of the Spartan armors as lazy or generic, because a lot of thought did go into these. And something else to keep in mind is that the artists poured their blood, sweat, and tears into each of these designs. It probably wasn't simple either. I can imagine some guy sitting down with a piece of paper on his desk and then drawing for Hours. After hour five or hour six, his hands are probably beginning to cramp up. He'll begin to feel tired and fidgety and restless because he's been focusing and sitting for so long. And he comes up with like 20 different versions of one armor. And when he goes to the designers and the higher ups and they're like, make a few more. None of these we like. He must just be sitting there thinking to himself, I spent so damn long planning these, sketching them, coloring them, and everything, only to have them thrown away. There are probably hundreds of unreleased pieces of concept art over at 343, and every single one of those is a little work of art that will never see the light of day because it, it isn't exactly what they wanted to see in the game. A lot of work goes into the art, and a lot of thought goes into every single little detail. But that leads me into where I think the community is maybe a little bit displeased. So remember, as we talk, we are not discrediting the hard work of the artist. But in the world of art, there is such a thing as too much detail. Detail is important, but too much detail can actually ruin an image, believe it or not. In art, it's important to know when the image is done. Sometimes adding more lines or jaggies or layers or shading and trying to focus on everything, it can complicate your image and the focus on your art can be lost in all of that detail. It's okay to put a lot of detail into your art, but it's also very important to know when to stop. Because for a lot of people, the detail in the new armors, it's a, it's a bit much. Nothing is really that memorable and standing the test of time like the classic armors. When people use the term generic, I think what they mean is that sci-fi as a genre is a big, big genre, right? There are literally hundreds of types of power armors in gaming, and the human brain is a bit of a tricky thing. There are some things that the brain will just jettison the memories of because it's got better things to do. It's got an entire human being up there that it's gonna organize and take care of, and I'm sure if you show a person this, or this, they're gonna remember this because it's more focused and it's easier on the eyes and a little bit more structured visually. While I strongly disagree that 343 is lazy and uncreative when it comes to their armor designs, I think the issue is actually the opposite here. I think it's that they focused too much on the details and got a bit out of control creatively and accidentally over-designed it into something that would feel at home in another property, just not Halo. 
If I can leave my mark on the video and my views, I think instead of flat out throwing out everything that 343 tried to do with the new armors, because, you know, the new armors do have their fans, maybe combine the best elements of both the old and the new. I present to you all Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer, which is in my opinion currently the best next step in Halo's art style. I have people in my comment section who get a little bit confused when I say I prefer the look of the older Halo games. They're like, well, you want worse graphics in Halo? No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What I want is I want the Halo art style to remain consistent. Innovation is all right. Innovation is great. Better graphics are fantastic. But this, this is innovating the old Halo art style for the Spartans. It took the iconic signature of the way that Bungie designed their armors and also incorporated some of the more physically liberating designs of the new 343 armors and some of the other things while not going overboard on the detail and hurting our brains. Another thing that may help 343 with making their armors a bit more memorable besides toning down some of the craziness and focusing on the look most people expect from Halo is also coloring. Many people criticize that the armors look very plasticky and fake, and so I think there's a couple of factors that play in here. In Halo 4 and to a larger extent Halo 5, your Spartans don't seem to be properly shaded. In Halo 5, Spartans practically glow in the dark, and shadows don't look natural on them. Reflections on their armors are rather dull, and the armor itself looks kind of foam-like in-game, and the understutes are now colored in with the rest of your armor pieces. When it comes to the shaders and the colors, I believe what's going on from a gameplay standpoint is that the idea is they don't want you to be able to just run into a dark corner and hide in the shadows and kill people who can't even see you, and as games get better and have more realistic lighting, you actually see a lot of games beginning to tackle the issue of visibility in different ways. Most modern shooters give characters in multiplayer a different shader or apply a subtle gloss over player models in order to ensure that you won't be killed by someone who perfectly blends into the background. Now, while that's one idea, other games choose to go a different route and have a thin red outline around your opponents. From a gameplay standpoint, making sure that the Spartans are completely one color, and making sure that they're cast in shadows is a good idea, but what it does take away from is the look of your game in a very heavy way, as well as limit other aspects of your game. Due to the colored undersuits, armors tend to all kind of mesh and look the same, because in the heat of a firefight, all you're going to see is a guy in a solid blue or solid red suit. The identity of the individual little armor pieces is going to be lost because they're all forced into looking connected and the same due to the color bodysuit. I bet a lot of people didn't even notice the armor on the lower torso because all they see is one solid color across the entire suit, again removing any identity. The black undersuit argument I believe is more than just a bunch of bratty whiny Halo fans that are just crying. Black undersuits would highlight the armor pieces even more because the shiny red or shiny blue pieces would contrast with the dull black underneath. What could maybe also help the Spartans stick out a little bit more without literally downgrading the visuals of your game is maybe looking at the lights on the Spartans' armors. Spartan armors in multiplayer have these little lights that glow the colors of their teams. Why not maybe add more lights to the Spartans' armors? Maybe brighten those lights up a little bit, add like a tiny little glare to them so that they stand out a little bit more. It would also look pretty damn cool to have the Spartans running around with these lights on their armor, wearing your team's color proudly and brightly. The reason I bring up the shading is just because having Spartans properly shaded opens up a lot of interesting custom games options and helps forge maps seem less forgy. The Crypt in Halo 5's infection playlist has its atmosphere completely broken and stripped away because the Spartans are all glowing in this inappropriate way. And so here we are at the end of the video. Now I have two tasks for everybody watching. When you guys give criticism in the comment section or on Waypoint or whatever, I want you to stop using terms like, it looks generic, it looks cartoony, or 343 sucks, because those are way too vague. It's not an argument. You need to be specific with your criticisms, because 343 is reading them, and they need details. And chances are, they're going to pay a lot more attention to your ideas if they're worded clearly and are respectful. And the other task is, in the comments section, I want you guys to comment on the next video you guys want me to focus my energy on writing up. I will comment three suggestions for the next video. The suggestion that gets the most likes will be the next video I will focus on. 
Thank you all so much for giving me your time and sharing these videos around. I enjoy reading your comments and opinions, and it makes me happy when I see that community discussing things in a more civilized manner. As you guys share these videos on your Facebook pages, or your Waypoint posts, or your Reddits, remember to be respectful and clear in your criticisms or praise. You can catch more bees if you use honey than vinegar. Be polite, be respectful, and believe it or not, people will listen to you more clearly.